With the general federal elections coming up in uh, November 3rd in the United States, there's something that we could all take a leaf out of the books of uh, the Bolivian people. And that is that it takes more than just voting on election day to, to remove fascism. Uh, and that's what um, the, the Bolivian people have demonstrated in this recent election, October 18th, where they, uh, in, a, in pretty much uh, the majority of the Bolivian people, voted back in the movement towards socialism, which is the party that Eva Morales was uh, ahead of until the right-wing coup happened, the US-backed right-wing coup led by Janine Anes, who is a Christian fascist, basically. They have contempt. The right-wing fascist coup basically had contempt for the Bolivian people, who are basically the majority of Bolivian people are indigenous people. And they, it's incre they're incredibly racist towards them. And so the coup was backed um, by the, the US, but they actually had an election just recently, and it turns out that um, not only did MAS, the Movement Towards Socialism, w win more votes than it did the last time when Eva Morales won, but it was a resounding result that told the Christian fascists and the US, the imperialist Pompeo and, uh, and all of us in this, these meddling Western imperialist countries that want to see the end of Bolivia as a socialist-leaning nation, um, it told them all to basically F off. Poverty is at the levels that it was before Eva Morales took power when Carlos Mesa was president in the early 2000s, you know, when the majority of the country lived below the poverty line. That is a, is a historic defeat for the Bolivian people who for 14 years had become, the, as I said, the region's fastest growing economy through the nationalization of natural resources, strategic industries, and then using those profits to invest in infrastructure development projects. And when the coup to power, all of that sort of collapsed. The economic crisis began before the pandemic because the state, the, the coup regime began paralyzing, suspending um, key development projects, big state led development projects that Evan Morales had built, such as the um, Cochabamba train, the trains project, the industrialization of lithium, the production of lithium, which is now completely paralyzed. And the reason this is so successful, the, this movement towards socialism party is so successful is because it's not just some token insular party that everybody just votes for every few years. It is um, a party of an amalgamation of all different kinds of social movements. And they call this party, they refer to this party as a political tool. Um, they don't see it as like, it's, it's just a representative of all these different social movements. And that should tell us something in the West about firstly, the voting on you know voting on election day which you know you can say is an important thing too but it's not really what's going to uh, move us towards a more equitable uh, socially equal country in anywhere in the west the only way we're going to actually do that and this is demonstrated by the bolivian people with their movement towards socialism party is when we have a whole bunch of movements that are representative of representative of the people not corporations but people and those movements get together and those movements become very big and they need to be nonviolent, and we all need to work together for that and we might have a, a political party that is you know represents all those different movements in a real way and the reason why the movement towards socialism keeps going as a party is because of that fact that they have all these movements that are um, supporting this particular aim, basically. This is why other countries fail, because they, these parties don't have that kind of uh, support and are not represent so representative of all these of different social movements. And that's why we in the West, we could all benefit from looking at what's been happening in Bolivia and how they managed to, at this election, throw out US imperialists and the f Christian fascists out of power after that coup that they did and and basically return to trying to once again overthrow neoliberalism, undo what the damage that's been done and also use the resources of the country for the people, not just squander it away and give it away to corporations and the, the people are uh, then basically like 
A lot of people in the United States now have been abandoned by the government because neoliberalism and uh, end-stage capitalism is what we are witnessing right now in the US and, and in other Western countries. But in Bolivia, they, you know, that's why Evo Morales was thrown, overthrown in a coup, you, backed by the West, is because uh, they want Bolivia's lithium, they want Western corporations to go in there and rape and pillage, they want it to become a neoliberal nightmare like it is in the United States, where they have control of the media, where they have control of the government, they install a puppet like Arnez, and they want to make impoverish the people, they want to destroy the indigenous population basically, and they want to um, basically make it a classist, uh, a very dysfunctional classist system, which is what we witness time and time again in the West, and it's only getting worse. Till eventually, you know, like in the United States, it, it, it's just an inverted, co uh, inverted totalitarian state, and the corporations are calling the shots and it gives fealty to democracy, etc. But basically, that's what it is. I mean, corporations are people, as uh, was defined by a Supreme Court ruling. Corporations are seen as persons in the United States. Well, that says it all, doesn't it? So anyway, uh, I wanted to share with you an excerpt of Oli Vargas, who is from, uh, who is a, a um, somebody from the UK, a journalist who I think lives in Bolivia, and he works for one of the alternative uh, independent journalist uh, radio stations, and he's been doing excellent work uh, reporting on what's been happening in Bolivia. He outlines why MAS has been so successful, and there are other things in the interview. You should check it out. Um, it's by The Grey Zone, and Anya Parampil does a great job of interviewing Oli Vargas there, and uh, he explains a lot of different things. It also highlights the importance of having a strong independent uh, journalist, independent news service, a, a number of them. It shows how important it is. We don't have that really in the West anymore. We have the corporate owned media and we have a smattering of leftist, real leftist um, journalists and news sources, which is not near enough for what one needs in a healthy functioning democracy. But that's exactly how US imperialists and the capitalist political class like it. They like to have a media that is basically reporting and being stenographers for the, the powerful elite. Um, we have that here in Australia with the Murdoch Press. They control most of what we see, read and hear in, the U in Australia. The movement towards socialism was founded with the idea that you, the social struggle and the electoral struggle have to go together. They can't go apart. Because throughout Latin American history, you've had social struggle without electoral participation, guerrilla groups, this sort of thing. And that, that has led to victory in very few places. And a lot of places like Colombia has led to protracted civil wars, uh, repression, etc. But likewise, if you just take an electoral approach without that social base, without that social struggle, well, you'll go the way of a million left-wing parties that you have in every country around the world. Maybe you do well, one or two elections disappear a couple of years later. And that's the history of the Bolivian left as well. There's numerous left-wing parties that have done very well electorally, didn't win, but then disappear a few years later. But the mass is something much deeper than that because they combine electoral participation with permanent social struggle on the ground, uh, in the indigenous communities, in workplaces. And that's something that's been going throughout this whole year. And without that struggle, this, this moment would have, would have never come. Because without that struggle, the mass would have disappeared once you start persecuting a few of its leaders. Evo Morales is gone. Um, Luis Arce had numerous charges invented against him. The leading Senate candidates were being persecuted. If the mass was just an electoralist party, it would have disappeared with that. Gone into hiding, you know, gone the way of many parties in Latin America that have gone extinct. Bolivia is a wonderful example of what the, the of the power of the people. You know that saying, "All all power to the people." That's what we need everywhere. And fortunately, in the U.S., more and more young people are realizing that end-stage capitalism and the political class have abandoned them altogether, and that they need to do something different. And that's why a lot of uh, young people are, ve are leaning towards socialism, which completely terrifies the U.S. Uh, political class and corporations because if the younger people of the the US start rejecting the current the status quo basically then that means that uh, they're going to have to crack down more and more 
on them because you know that's that's where fascism comes in you know one of the almost predictable results of end-stage capitalism is fascism and along with that imperialism so that's what we're that's what western imperialism has been doing in bolivia trying to crush indigenous people trying to crush any sort of uh movement towards socialism literally trying to crush um you know and and uh, take over that country because it has not submitted to western imperialists and uh, western capitalism and this is what we do western imperialism does over and over again uh trying to crush any sort of um people's movement and trying to to destroy that movement and also trying to make any country that hasn't submitted to u.s imperialism either invading them like they're trying to do with venezuela or economic sanctions that are absolutely horrific that are killing they've killed about a hundred thousand now venezuelans with u.s economic sanctions uh, they're trying to do that in iran they're trying to i mean iran is not a, a socialist country but it has not submitted to the u.s and they are trying to the u.s is has terrible sanctions on iran which are killing people this is in a time of a pandemic killing many many people and making it life so so difficult and in another video i'm going to talk about the ongoing struggle palestinians have in gaza and how literally at the present time people are eating out of garbage bins in gaza and the un has warned repeatedly that gaza is becoming unlivable well voila it's almost there now where children most children are drinking uh polluted water and it's almost like a genocide because gaza is under under blockade and it is sort of basically beholden to the apartheid state of israel through this siege um children are drinking polluted water and that's a genocide in itself because uh israel is literally poisoning palestinian children in gaza and they can't do anything about it so this is why you know we have to be in solidarity with people of the people of bolivia the people the uh, palestinians um iranians we have to be in in solidarity with venezuelans we have to be in solidarity with any country that the u.s imperialist death machine death war machine has in its crosshairs and that is many countries you can almost guarantee when you hear that there's some sort of trouble in a certain country that somewhere in its history or even currently the u.s uh, empire is having is meddling in that country so this is why we have to be in solidarity we have to be internationalists now if we weren't before we have to be because it isn't as like it's not like somewhere on in the in the world something some violence is happening towards indigenous people or people in countries where the u.s has its cross where the u.s has it in its crosshairs it's not like that is irrelevant to us here in countries like australia and the uk etc because what what goes what goes around comes around what happens in those countries eventually comes back home but even if let's not even let's not do that in any sort of selfish sense let's do it because we're all fellow citizens of this planet and i include non-human animals in that and that's why i'm vegan that's why i don't um, believe in eating wearing and using animals eating animal products and using them i see them as sentient animals fellow fellow earthlings that that deserve to be not colonized and interfered with and bred into existence to be used as things and resources so we need to take even a broader approach than what a lot of us on the left is doing and think in that way about non-human animals but we need to see that whatever is happening in the world and that includes of course the greatest population on the planet non-human animals what happens to them is what is happening in many ways in different ways to people now on the planet that isn't in isolation it's not in a vacuum and what is happening to people in bolivia has been happening to other countries and will eventually come round to um us in the west anyway we need to care about it because we're human beings and we should uh not be thinking in terms of national boundaries because they're all artificial boundaries we're all people we're all human beings on the planet we share the planet with non-human animals who are all their own moral persons which just means they're not a thing then they are sentient animals just like we are we all need to start thinking in that way even if it is the end time even if it even if it is extinction on the horizon we can do something now to 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 do the right thing by other people on the on the planet and not let this ruling corporate capitalist death machine um you know have the final say in a way maybe they will have the final say in that you know climate the climate crisis is has its own propulsion now and is probably is i'd say unstoppable but we don't have to let them we don't have to go out with a whimper we can all be in solidarity with one another and start to really significantly push against these um 
rapacious psychopaths, basically, that are, are helping destroy the planet. That's, that's something that we can all do, and we, we should not lose hope in that we can come together, because the push has come to a shove, and it's imperative that we do.